Now, a walk cycle is made up of four major keys. If you follow this formula, you'll get something that looks like a walk every time. Okay. So if anything goes wrong, something went wrong with the formula, the way that you applied the formula, this works, this has worked for over a hundred years, right? So this is how you can break down a human being's walk. There are two major positions with a walk, both feet on the ground and one foot on the ground, right? Those are the two most important keys for a walk. That would be the contact pose and the passing position. So when you look at the four poses, there are two poses with legs on the ground and two poses with only one leg on the ground. All right. So the contact pose is usually the place that we start. It's the first pose we usually build. And that's the moment where the heel strikes the ground. Okay. Then there's a recovery where the knees bend and all that weight, right? Your direction is going down. You're accelerating down, but your knees will slow you down. And then you'll reverse and change direction and start going up. So this is the moment where you're just landing. And then the down position is where you absorb all of that weight. And then you start pushing the body up. The passing position, right, shown here, is all the weight is on one leg, but that leg is under the body. It's a very balanced pose. You could stop here and you wouldn't fall over, right? Everything center of mass is supported by the foot. But as you continue going to the next pose towards the next foot contact, right? This position, which he calls the up, I, I usually call it the push off because it makes more sense. It's not always the up. That's why I don't like to call it the up. The push off pose where you're pushing off with that back leg, this is now unstable. If this foot doesn't make it to the ground, down you go. So this is the point of no return. Um, a walk is basically a controlled fall. Every step you're catching that fall, right? And then pushing you onto the next step. So the way that we build this, um, again, you look at his book, he's broken it down in a lot of detail without the arms. So you just start looking at how do you space things out and the timing, we're going to follow his timing. So the timing for a walk is usually one second for the whole, whole cycle, two steps. So it means 12 frames per step. So that's one and two and three, right? So it's just, da -dum, da -da -da -dum, dum, dum, right? It's March time. That's, that's a walk. And most people, if you just go watch people that are just kind of walking on the street at sort of what we'd call like a normal pace, most people walk bang on 12. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're taking big steps or small steps. A lot of times the timing is really close. And again, this is something that was just observed. One of the Disney animators, Milk Call, he went out one day with a stopwatch and he just went to coffee shops and sat there and watched people walk with a stopwatch. And he was, you know, almost bang on almost everybody walks March time, 12 frames per step. So that's where the formula the timing came from. But of course people can walk faster or slower. There's a range, but we've got to start somewhere. So we'll start with the formula. Okay. And if you look at all the positions, right? If you take 12 frames and divide it by four poses, what's 12 divided by four? Anyone. Three. One plus three is four. Plus three is seven. Plus three is ten. Plus three is yeah, fifteen. Th there you get the timing, right? So this is like separating up all those poses evenly <clears throat> into 24 frames, right? For the whole thing. So when we're creating a cycle, of course, we do have this issue where frame one and 25 have to be the same. We're not going to build a walk that goes across the screen. We're going to do a treadmill. We're going to have the character walk as if there were an invisible treadmill right in place. So the first frame and 25 are going to be identical. So the cycle loops back on itself and will play. Okay. So frame one and 25 are identical, right? So the right leg is forward. The right leg is forward. Frame 13 is the exact same pose, but everything is now flopped the opposite leg is leading. All the rotations of the body are opposite, the opposite side. So a big part of doing a walk cycle is mirroring poses, okay? The other tip I have is when we're working, work in linear tangents because a lot of times um, the feet will slide above the ground or below the ground, even though you didn't ask them to, just because the curves kind of do weird things. We do a lot of copying and pasting. So initially when I'm doing my blocking, when I'm working, I tend to work in linear tangents and then I'll put everything in step mode when I want to do a play blast early on just for blocking. Oh, there we go. Right. So going from linear to step tangents and again, I'll show a demo how to do that. But if you don't remember, 
it's this little tangent type right over there. You just grab everything and put it into step mode. It'll just show your poses. Now the workflow for building the walk is you build the poses in pairs, right? Each pose, those four poses has a mirror image. So you're building four poses and then the mirror image. So there's eight keys all together, but it's really just four. You make those four and then you mirror them, right? So you get them almost for free. You just have to do a little bit of work to make sure that the mirror image of the other side. So what you start with is the contact pose. I'll start with this pose and then I'll do that pose, right? So frame one, contact, frame 13, the exact opposite contact. So I do that. When I build that, of course, it's not terribly interesting, especially from an orthographic view. You can barely see just with the arms swapping, it looks almost the same because an orthographic view has no perspective. So an orthographic side view, you get no depth, it looks very weird, but at least I know that the feet are in exactly the same position. They're completely mirrored. And it's very hard to see, but if you look over here, you can see the legs are swapping sides and the arms are swapping sides. So that's just one pose, the contact pose, but it's in two spots, one with the right leg in front, one with the left leg in front. The next thing you do is the halfway point. So if I have a contact pose here and a contact pose here, the halfway point is the passing position, right? So I'm doing the biggest change, right? Going from two legs to one leg to two leg. That's what the idea is going to the passing position. Now what the computer will do is it will just slide the leg on the floor. It won't know that it has to come up, which is actually not too bad an idea because what happens is you get something completely halfway and then all you have to do is lift it up and lift that leg up, right? So you lift the body up, lift that foot up, and then you get it to come up and go to the next position. Okay, so that's the passing pose. So this is two poses now, contact and passing. So there's a pose where both legs are on the ground and a pose where only one leg's on the ground, alternating back and forth. Still doesn't look like a walk yet. Well, the next thing you would break down is you would do the pose where just after the contact, the legs bend. So that's the pose where all the weight gets absorbed, right? So the body goes down, the knees bend, okay? And then mirror that pose, and it looks like this. Right here, it starts to, all of a sudden, it starts to feel like a walk. We're still missing one pose. If it doesn't feel like a walk at this point, something hasn't clicked. You miss something, something's going on that's odd, or maybe didn't mirror something the right way. This is a good place to kind of check everything and say, okay, I'm not gonna go forward if I can't get this to work. If I've got these three poses in and it's not feeling like a walk, I'm in trouble. It's not gonna get better by adding more detail. So you go back and check your poses, make sure everything's mirrored. And the last pose is the push-off. You know, like I mentioned, that push-off pose is like, you're like this, but balanced. You're just going forward. So now the body is forward and you need that other leg to come out to catch that weight, okay? So it's, the passing position is balanced. It's very, very symmetric. And if you look from the front view and nothing's gonna fall, but the passing position is where you're, or you're, you're just pushing off from the passing position and just about to land into the next step. Once I get that one in there, and this is all just step mode. <clears throat> and again, just focus on the hips and the feet. Everything starts to feel like I'm walking. Okay, I'm getting everything to walk properly. Now the detail with the upper body, that we'll work on a little bit later. The first goal is let's just get the hips and the legs working with the arms. I would just keep the arms super straight and just kind of just forward and back, right? Just like an action figure, right? Just really limited rotations at the beginning. The arms are very distracting. Um, what's more important than the arms is the spine and the neck and the head. And you remember we did the assignment with the tail ball and also the lamp where we had like the base of the lamp and the head of the lamp were doing different things. They were offset from one another and that felt more organic, more alive, more connected. That's the same problem we have with a walk where we have basically something flexible up here and the hip here and the hip is pushing on it, right? And if the head and the chest don't react, it feels very stiff. But if we loosen things up and we start to see that, oh, okay, when the hip pushes up, it snaps the neck down. When the hip goes down, the head rotates up. Then you get that connection. And it feels like one thing is affecting something else. If they are both timed the same, they don't feel connected anymore, okay? So there's a little bit of work we have to do to kind of create that going up the chain. But the first part is the hips and the legs. Let's get that working. And then we'll work our way up the chain. The arms you do last. There's no need to get distracted with them, okay?
That's the basic of the formula. And in the front view, it's also important to remember that the hip is also gonna be tilting, okay? So what usually happens is that the side of the body that's bearing the weight is usually tilted up. Have you had your first life drawing class yet? Yeah, we did. Okay, so this is old news, right? So when somebody is standing like this, right? Parallel, and the legs are just coming straight down, right? It's very flat, right? If I took that same idea, right? And then just put one leg kind of up in the air like that, right? This doesn't feel balanced anymore, right? Because here I can see all the weight is here, the center of mass is here. But if I do the same thing, right? Now this doesn't feel balanced anymore because a lot of weight is not supported. So a lot of things happen when you look in the front view, what needs to happen? Well, the feet are usually under the body more. The hip will also move out over that side. The hip also tilts on that side because this is pushing up and this is not, this falls because there's nothing holding it up anymore, right? Gravity pushes down and this leg pushes up. So the hip tilts this way. So we're looking at this change in the front view of the hip rocking back and forth because of the weight, right? So the weight's there. We also need to check the balance because if we just lift one foot off the ground without adjusting the hip or the foot position, it's not gonna feel balanced, okay? So good stuff to study in life drawing. When, whenever you're looking at your poses in, in like life drawing, um, a really important thing to do is whatever the model is doing is drop a plumb line from the chin and almost always it'll fall over a foot. Most of the time it'll hit a foot somewhere. So you're gonna find your plumb line. Where's the kid? Where's the, the model standing? Where's the plumb line? And then you look for contrapposto. You look for like, where's the weight? If I know what leg has the weight, then I can do whatever I want with the other leg. It'll still work because I need to get the weight first.